Season's greetings, I'm your host, Dr. Wolfula, and when I'm not being visited by three ghosts who are pretty much threatening to kill me if I don't learn the true meaning of Christmas, I'm here at the Wolfula, sipping on a cup of eggnog. I guess I could also review a movie for you. You never visit me just to hang out. You just take and take and take, and you know what? That's what Christmas is all about, taking. I'd love to grace your miserable lives this holiday season with another review. It's Christmas time, after all. Okay, I know, it ain't Christmas no more. It's January, but I missed out on Christmas and now I'm catching up. If you got a problem with that, get run over by a fucking reindeer, chump. Christmas is when I post this video. Oh, and I'd like to first establish that I absolutely hate Christmas and everything that it stands for, but I also enjoy making money. And when it's the holiday season, there's no bigger scam than Christmas. I mean, it's ingenious, really. A Christian holiday celebrating the birth of a savior becomes corrupted by big business, painted up like a cheap harlot, and slapped across every can of Coke. It really is beautiful. Anyway, what Christmas flick will I be reviewing this year? Well, I let the fans decide. Hundreds voted, and out of Santa's sleigh, Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, and even the original Black Christmas, Jack Frost 2 somehow won. I think somebody might have rigged it. Whatever, a promise is a promise, and having somebody else choose is easier on me. Let's revisit Jack Frost, the mutant killer snowman. Here's a little recap of the first Jack Frost. A serial killer dies and becomes a snowman. At one point, this snowman sexually assaults Shannon Elizabeth. That's all you really need to know to make the decision about whether or not Jack Frost is a movie that you should watch. Jack Frost 2 picks up a year later. When you're making a sequel to something like Jack Frost, you kind of have to go into it with a fuck it mentality. You're making another movie about a killer snowman. Fuck it. So that's precisely what happens with Jack Frost 2. You remember Sheriff Tyler from the first flick? The guys become traumatized following his deadly second run-in with the revenge-seeking Jack Frost. They smashed their skulls with sticks and stones, used iron bars to break their bones. It was a killer snowman, after all. It's kind of tricky to get over that sort of jackassery. So Sam Tyler has been seeing a shrink to help him get over last year's Christmas. I thought we agreed last week that we're going to try and discuss something other than the Jack Frost incident. Huh. I thought Mr. Pitt was a publisher, not a psychiatrist. Whatever. The psychiatrist isn't respectful towards his patient, airing the poor guy's story about a killer snowman over the PA system. A crowd forms to listen to this spiel, and I can only assume, based on the attendees, that this psychiatric office is on the same floor as a diner and a construction site. Doctor-patient confidentiality is a privilege, not a right. Trust me, I know these things. I'm a doctor myself. Tell us how you finally stopped the mutant killer snowman. With any freeze. So, Sam Tyler is pretty much a joke, even though there are a lot of witnesses for that whole killer snowman thing. He probably lives in a hick town, though. Jack Frost? More like Jack shit, am I right? <laughs> in order for Sam to finally get past his PTFD, or post-traumatic frost disorder, Sam's wife, Anne, decides to take her husband to a tropical resort in order to get away from the snow and relax. Well, based on this scene, this town has got some pretty lame-ass snow. Looks like somebody spilled some cocaine all over the place. And this is supposed to be the town's airport? Looks like a chain restaurant. It was exactly a year ago that it happened? Yeah. And that's why we should be somewhere else for Christmas. Somewhere with no memories. Yep. The vacation isn't just for Sam's benefit, though. The Tyler family's friends, Joe and Marla, are also going to get married on the island. Yeah, take my advice. Wait until you're in your 50s before you get married. You got a lot less options by then anyway. I mean, your life is pretty much over by then. You might as well lock something down for your remaining years. I know, we're late. Oh, I see last. Anyway, enough of the middle-aged characters planning their vacation. You want to know where the killer snowman is. Yeah, where is he anyway? Well, some mystery man retrieves Jack Frost's remains and Frost's melted corpse or whatever is experimented on by a bunch of scientists, I guess? The reason why this happens isn't really explained. I guess maybe somebody wanted to make another Jack Frost or something? Perhaps this would have been explained in a third Jack Frost, but unfortunately, 
It doesn't look like that will be happening. Let's just be grateful that we got these two fantastic Jack Frost films. Okay, so for some reason, Jack Frost is kept inside an aquarium suspended by chains, and somebody thought that this aquarium would be a great surface to leave their cup of joe on. A nice, stable surface, right? You can get it at Ikea. Well, unfortunately, a clumsy janitor is just allowed to go into this high-tech facility completely unsupervised, and... Of course, the janitor spills the coffee into the aquarium, causing Jack Frost to escape load. This brutish oaf is the first to die, but incidentally. So this is how the Joker got his scars. Alright, Jack Frost is on the loose yet again, but this time as a puddle of water. <sighs> Things to do, revenge to take. <sighs> I'm really intimidated by a killer that you can defeat with a mop. The two old couples arrive at their tropical destination, Stock Footage Island. The actual island resort looks like a pretty nice apartment complex. The place is run by the eccentric Colonel Hickering and his right-hand man, Bobby. The movie makes no attempt to conceal its attempts at satire by having the Colonel predict all the life lessons that the new guests will learn on their vacations. Now that's Rose, Ashley, and Paisley. Here we go. First vacation without the parents. Now, now they think they're looking for adventure. However, what they'll discover is the true meaning of friendship. Isn't that sweet? Look I have to admit, it's a pretty efficient way to establish your cast of victims when you don't really give a fuck. The movie covers its bases pretty thoroughly when the characters exit the truck made out of wicker baskets. You got a few supposed teenage girls, fashion models, a flamboyant photographer, and of course, some old people that will totally survive the film. Not everybody has to have a life story, man. Some of these people, they're just here on vacation, man. <laughs> Absolutely not. Everyone here for a reason, yes. mark my words. Jack Frost is making his way across the ocean to find Sam and get even, but first, Jack needs to get all the stuff that makes him a snowman. Stuff like carrots, coal, and a scarf. You know, a really badass look. Or maybe instead they can make Jack look like he did on the fucking cover of the first movie. You know, whatever, if I was able to change my shape, I'm just saying I'd pick something more intimidating than a few piles of snow with a face. To acquire a carrot nose, for example, Jack happens to encounter a couple of castaways who happen to have a carrot in their cooler. A lousy carrot? Where is the damn candy bar? And it was yummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the movie feels the need to pointlessly explain where a carrot comes from, and it comes up with the most unlikely of explanations for it. Well, it makes the effects guys' jobs a lot easier when Jack Frost is just depicted as a carrot being wiggled by a string for quite a bit of the movie. Uh, there's a party and I'm not invited. Someone's gonna pay. I'm kind of wondering, how can Jack Frost talk when he doesn't have vocal cords or lungs? I mean, sure, when he's a snowman, he can probably make snow vocal cords or lungs, but now he's just a carrot. Ah, <sighs> you gotta be really afraid of a villain that could get his ass whooped by a bunny. Everyone is enjoying the island except Sam. It's tricky to enjoy anything after you kill a murderous snowman. Few things measure up after that. Luckily, the island has a cure for grumpiness. Captain Fun. Has a grunt monster stolen your happy dust? This is a job for Captain Fun! Nun, nun. A man living on the island whose only purpose in life is to make sure everyone is having a good time. He has no other given name beyond Captain Fun, and he is the best character in this movie. I may have to use the secret weapon. <laughs> Honestly, he should be on the cover of the movie, not Jack Frost. He steals the show. Anyway, Jack Frost starts killing folks on the island. Well, admittedly, these slangs are a gimme. I mean, when your prey tries to defend themselves with tongs instead of running away, you can pretty much just phone it in. Alright, so here's where the story really gets started. The Colonel and Bobby discover some corpses that couldn't have possibly been produced through anything other than murder. Murder is always bad for business, unless you sell security systems. So the Colonel decides to cover the murders up by blaming the deaths on a shark. Murder? Nonsense. Shark attack. Honestly, a land shark is significantly more believable than a killer snowman. Sam catches wind of all this nonsense and meets an old acquaintance from the first film. 
Agent Manners. Uh, last year in Snowman, trust me, Sheriff. You've got the wrong guy. Well, then how do you know that I'm a sheriff? Uh-huh. <laughs> Look at me. The character is played by a different actor, but it honestly does not matter to me because I do not remember this guy at all. This actor is at least better than the previous Manners, if not only for the eye patch. The land shark thing doesn't sit well with Manners or Tyler, so the two conspire to track the real killer down along with... Captain Fun! Oh boy! If you ever need to capture, say, a murderer or a rapist, Book Captain Fun. He'll make certain to throw an entrapment that you'll never forget. What's the plan? Trust me. You'll love it. So basically, your solution to every problem is to throw a party and have people dress up like idiots and then get them roaring drunk. You'd be amazed at how effective it is. Oh, you gotta try the banana shrimp. No, I'll pass. So that's the gist of the story. There's a killer snowman on the loose on a tropical island, and some middle-aged people have to stop this killer snowman with the help of a person named Captain Fun. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. If you're going into any killer snowman movie expecting a good story, the next time you see a burning building, please walk into it. That being said, as far as killer snowman movies go, Jack Frost 2's story is reasonably adequate, despite not making any sense at all. To make things easier, the movie relies more on comedy than horror. Of course it does. If you were to write this kind of movie and be serious about it, you'd be laughed at! <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Some of the jokes fall flat, though, and a lot of the humor is really cutesy for a violent R-rated horror movie. You're late. That's a sign. We shouldn't be going. No, it's a sign that there's traffic, Sam. A traffic sign? Get it? The tone of the movie is all over the place. Sometimes it gets pretty dark, and sometimes it felt like I was watching Nick at Night. Still, at times, the movie is funny. I'll meet you in reception in ten minutes. Well, if it's so important, why don't you just talk to me about it right here? I have to pee. At least a bit, and that's all you can really hope for. There is an apparent effort put into the story and writing. Not a great effort, mind you, but effort. That's how Jack Frost 2 can best be described. It's not a very good movie, but for a low-budget movie with a dumb premise, it looks like the people involved with this movie really tried. Come on, we're gonna build a sled run, and we're gonna use surfboards and sleds. Isn't that just the craziest? Jack Frost looks cuter than scary, like he was a repurposed costume for a children's film, but man, the gore is pretty well done, and there's some creative kills here and there. Like, you know that scene in Christmas Story where the kid sticks his tongue to a pole for no good reason? Jack Frost 2 realizes our biggest fear during that scene. Getting our tongue ripped off! Wow, that guy's tongue sure looks phallic. Of course, with a movie like this, there are some effects that are just no good, even in a cheesy way. Like the moon being photoshopped into the sky, and Jack Frost 2 kind of ruins its B-movie appeal by using quite a bit of CGI. That was fun! <laughs> CG always looks good in a low-budget movie. Jack Frost, the character, also doesn't get much screen time in this flick, instead appearing as water or ice for a great deal of the movie, but when he does show up, it looks like he can barely move. Like in this shot, he's just standing there motionless. Frozen. <laughs> Jack Frost kind of gets replaced in this movie. Halfway through the flick, Jack starts to... give birth to baby snowmen? So Jack has a snow uterus? Oh, whatever. There's no reason for these little monsters, and honestly, they're kind of annoying. <laughs> they make the fucking dumbest sounds, they're just balls with arms attached, pulled by strings, and they're trying too damn hard to be cute. Again, it's the kind of strange thing that makes the movie feel like it was made for kids. This is a killer snowman movie, not a killer snowball movie, goddammit! Something positive I will say about Jack Frost 2 is that I kind of grew fond of a lot of the characters. Mostly because of how strange and unconventional they all were. Like, do I really want to see a guy named Captain Fun die in a movie? Surprisingly, no! All of my favorite characters died in this movie, though, so you know what? Fuck life. The music of Jack Frost 2 sounds like generic, royalty-free stuff, but there are some unique sound design choices in the film. I'm referring to short music repeatedly being played whenever something happens. Like whenever the general mentions India, Indian music starts to play in the background for some reason. 
It wasn't like this in India, you know. Back in India, I had to saw my best friend's leg off with a broken teacup and use it as a weapon. Back in India, those Punjab bollers had killed 150 of us before the CO even gave the order for us to get out of bed. Also, stock dramatic music randomly plays whenever Agent Manners is around. Scary dude's already here. Meet me in reception in 10 minutes. What is that? Don't tell me that is Manners! <laughs> It's like a teenager did the audio editing for this movie. Spoiler alert! Gonna be giving away the rest of Jack Frost 2. Skip to this time code to see my final verdict. You... you don't really care, do you? So, Jack Frost is killed by antifreeze, like the last movie, except he doesn't die. Have you any idea how much this shit stings? And I swallowed it! Now we hacked it up for a week! Shoot. Yeah, Jack has become immune to antifreeze because of that government stuff that wasn't explained earlier. So Jack escapes, and Sam practically becomes catatonic, convinced that there's no hope to beat this snowman that will soon overtake the world. So what we need is some antifreeze. Sam! If we could just find some antifreeze. Sam! Sam is pretty much a useless idiot for the next half hour. Guess what, though? Sam's wife, Anne, decides that she doesn't want the world to get its ass kicked by a snowman. So she's the one that organizes an initiative to defeat Jack Frost. I'm saving the day. Who would have thought that Jack Frost 2 could be considered a film that's empowering the women? Well, I guess there was still the skinny dipping drowning scene and the scene where the model is trying to get her nipples erect with ice, but all that stuff is behind us now. Now it's empowering. So the island has been overrun by little Jack Frost, and the characters have about as much luck stopping these things as they do the big guy. The movie starts to feel like Jurassic Park, but with snowmen. In the course of things, Anne discovers the true weakness of Jack Frost and his cohorts. Bobby's Island Daiquiri. It got light rum, just a dash of maraschino, lemon juice, half a teaspoon of sugar, and half a banana blended to perfection. Okay, so you're probably wondering why a fruity drink is the weakness of a killer snowman. Well, Sam happens to be allergic to bananas, and you know what? I'll let Anne explain it. You remember a year ago when Sam's blood got into the antifreeze? Well, that's when they linked up. Well, maybe when that happened, Jack inherited Sam's banana allergy. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's retarded. Too bad that bananas are hard to come by on a tropical island, right? So, yeah, all of Jack's kids are easily eliminated, and Jack is understandably pissed. Oh god, now I'm starting to feel sympathetic for a killer snowman. What the fuck is going on? Now it's killing time. Jack Frost arrives to kick some human ass, and Joe and Marla retreat to the freezer where it may be cold, but that cold will not kill them. Well, not right away. Jack traps Anne inside a box that becomes lined with icicles that will eventually crush slash stab her to death. This scene is actually pretty damn suspenseful. The only real suspense in the whole movie and it only took until the end. Luckily, Sam arrives and shoots Jack with a bow and arrow. The arrow happening to have a banana on the tip which explodes Jack. Okay, I don't think allergies work that way. Just saying. Whatever, Jack is now a puddle of shaving cream and Sam reunites with his wife. How sweet. Sam carries Anne towards the ocean for some reason. Yeah, good idea. Walk towards the ocean where the killer snowman came from. Movie isn't over yet. During the credits, a Japanese ship surveys the island, and the crewmen have English voices dubbed over like in a Godzilla flick. Did you feel that? Yes, I did. But what was it? I think you see where this is going. Godzilla! Yeah, I guess the third Jack Frost was going to be a giant killer snowman movie. Oh man, what could have been? Oh yeah, after the credits, it turns out that Sam and Anne forgot to let Joe and Marla out of the freezer. So the couple slowly freezes to death. Man, what a great ending to this movie. Joe's turning blue! Open the door! Okay, Jack Frost 2 is a dumb movie, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's pretty enjoyable, and there was a lot of care put into it. There are some good moments, and sometimes it's even funny. I actually like this flick more than the first. If you're ever in the market for a killer snowman movie, make it Jack Frost 2. I give Jack Frost 2, Revenge of the Mutant Killer Snowman, a banana daiquiri out of antifreeze. I can't wait for a sandcastle horror movie. Because friends don't let friends drink and surf. So you finish that daiquiri first, okay? <laughs> Be
Be sure to follow me, Dr. Wolfula, on Twitter. Oh, and like my official Facebook page. Seriously, fucking do it. It'll really help my self-esteem. Ugh.